If you've ever watched a YouTube video about guns in front of a black background, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Ladies and gentlemen, and the often forgotten, but not by me, WE EU 17s, that's enough Grand Thumb references for one video. Today I'm going to talk about the KWA LM4 DLE. A lot of letters I know, but essentially it's an M4 platform a gas blowback rifle from KWA designed originally exclusively for law enforcement and military training in the US. And I believe as a result of that, you can't actually purchase this gun in the United States. So for my friends across the pond, I do apologize. We're lucky enough in the UK to be able to buy this one and lucky we are indeed. I've been using this for a while now, so it's not gonna be an unboxing. But out of the box, what you're going to receive is the gun, obviously. You're going to have, we'll start at the top, a flash hider akin to the PTS or Tokyo Marui flash hiders. It's got a 14 millimeter counterclockwise thread, the grub screw at the bottom to make sure that it's nice and secure. Most of the QD suppressors on the market will fit this, but if you are gonna get one, I would recommend getting a quality QD suppressor. I did run an ICS one on here a few weeks ago at Warzone and the recoil actually rattled it off. Uh, coming down from there, we've got a 10 inch barrel with a nine and a half inch quad Picatinny handguard. So we've got Picatinny all the way around. PTS flip up sights. So these are polymer iron sights, completely adjustable for windage and elevation. They flip down to a nice low profile, so if you want to run a red dot or magnified optics on there, you can flip them down and get them out of the way. But when you do flip them up, it's nice and firm, nice and steady, and they stay where you want them to be unless you go and flip them down again. There's a nice authoritative click when it comes up and you know that that's locked into place then. Coming back from there, we've got a bit of a dangly bit from my torch and the pressure switch because I didn't want to cut the cable ties off. Back from there, We've got ambidextrous fire selector. So we've got one on the left here, as well as one on the right there. And an ambidextrous charging handle, which is fantastic for people like me, given that I am a left-handed shooter. The iron sights aren't the only PTS. So we've got a PTS enhanced polymer grip here as well, with storage in the bottom for extra batteries or Smarties or Skittles or whatever you want to throw in there. A nice sling plate between the upper receiver and the buffer tube and a mil spec buffer tube. So you can put any mil spec stock on here. If you're gonna put something like the Magpul CTR on, just make sure it is that mil spec, not commercial spec, otherwise it's not gonna fit properly. Finally, we've got KWA's polymer adjustable stock. It's adjustable from five positions from completely collapsed where you'll be at about 28 inches, I think, for the full length of the gun to completely extended where you'll be around 32 and a half inches. It's a polymer stock with a rubber butt pad. It's gas blowback, so obviously there's no way you'd need to store a battery or anything like that. So it keeps it nice and lightweight with a QD sling point on each side. So if you're gonna run a two point sling, you can attach it to your stock if you want. I tend to use this sling plate in the middle here for my uh, single point warrior fast X sling. Finally, the forward assist is actually a functioning forward assist on this. So if you have a BB that hasn't quite fed properly, you can try and use the forward assist to push that bolt forward or grab the slide. Please um, obviously take your magazine out before you do that. Next up in the box, you get one, in my case, a metal 30 round magazine. Uh, this is, from what I can tell, the same magazine that you get with the original LM4. The LM4D was supposed to come with one that had a switch on the top for a dry fire mode. It didn't come with mine, I got this magazine instead, but looking on KWA's website, there's an advanced gas polymer magazine with the dry fire switch. It shows this metal magazine with a, a 30 round capacity, so I'm not too sure what the deal is there. Either way, gas efficiency with these is fantastic when combined with KWA's new advanced gas system and 30 round magazines. Took a little bit of getting used to, but they are great fun to use. Other than the one out of the box, I went for, for additional magazines, the PTS EPM GBBR mags. So these work with the original LM4 as well as the LM4D. They're about 700 grams fully loaded. Nice grippy texture on them to stop you dropping them. 
a 38 round capacity and again the gas efficiency is great so when i fill these mags i'll get about two and a half mags worth of bbs before i run out of gas that is if i'm running uh, new prol 3.0 or 2.0 at a push depending on how it shoots out of the box i'll go through that in a moment when we get to the pros and cons and then finally out of the box with no magazine and no attachments on it this gun's weighing in at around 2.9 kilos or 6.4 pounds your magazines are going to be another 700 grams on top of that so you can plate package you're around 3.6 kilos and i'll do the maths and put the pounds on the screen that's one more thing to take into consideration too that i really didn't when i moved from aeg to gas blow pack is just the extra weight that you're going to be carrying around so the gun itself isn't so bad at 3.6 with a mag in put a few attachments on there and things like that and you're going to be pushing for maybe four and a half kilos for the weapon which is fine once it's slung but when you're carrying an extra six mags with you at 700 grams each, that's over another four kilos in mags and you definitely wouldn't have been carrying that when you were using an AEG. So if you're as unfit as I am, just keep that in mind. <laughs> Maybe try and get your fitness up and make sure that you can carry that weight around for a full skirmish before you commit to doing it or commit to doing it anyway and use that to help you get in shape again like I am. So I've combined that extra weight, my 9.1 kilo travail fitness plates, and it's a struggle. It's really, really hard, but it's helping. So just something to keep in mind for you. Okay, so as the title says, and I wholeheartedly believe this is the best entry to gas blowback rifles. If you're moving up from an AEG and you want to get into the world of gas blowback rifles, I would 100% recommend going for one of these, but there are some cons. We'll go through the pros first, because that's the exciting bit. Pros, it is extremely solid. It's really well built, comes with PTS furniture. Another pro is the previous LM4, the old one, cut a bit of flack for having some double feed issues and so forth. So KWA have actually listened to their customers and they've completely redesigned the hop-up unit in this gun. So instead of needing the old tool that you'd have to put up through the mag well or lock the bolt back to adjust, this has a little wheel that you can just adjust with your finger and get really fine adjustments on that. It's now using a proper hop nub as well, rather than a little tension arm to apply hop pressure. And the hop rubber out of the box is grooved down the center to give you extra accuracy and it applies a good amount of hop. I have no issues with this gun lifting 3.2 gram or 0 0.32 gram BBs and I've got it zero with my magnified optics on a range of about 65 meters. So it performs absolutely fantastically. Tears down just like a real AR or as close as we're gonna get in the UK. Moving on, having the sling plate between the upper receiver and the buffer tube out of the box is a small feature and it's a nice touch. I consider that another pro. It's one other thing that you don't have to buy, one accessory that you don't need to buy out of the box. The forethought to include the QD points on their polymer stock as well is fantastic. It feels great in your hand and the recoil on this is phenomenal. I'm definitely putting that in the pros list. The recoil feels amazing. There's enough there that you actually have to account for it and manage your recoil when you're taking your shots. All right, on to the cons. There aren't that many, and some of them are almost personal to me as well. So I'll start with the ones that are more personal to me, and in which case there's only one of them, and that's they've got the ambidextrous fire selector and ambidextrous charging handle on here. I would have liked to have seen an ambidextrous mag release and an ambi bolt catch as well. Secondly, as far as I can tell, there's no aftermarket hot rubbers or anything like that in there. I'd like to put something really similar to a Maple Leaf Autobot or Decepticon in this, but I just couldn't find any. And in my quest to find a hot rubber, I discovered that there's not a whole host of aftermarket parts available for this gun. I don't know if there's plans for that in the future, but as it stands while I'm filming this, the aftermarket parts availability isn't there. That said though, out of the box, it performs absolutely fantastically. Aftermarket parts compatibility, it is a bit of a con, but it's also not entirely necessary. And finally is the cost of the mags. And this is gonna be the case with any gas blowback rifle. Magazines are expensive. 
So you're at 450 for the gun, which is super affordable for a gas blowback rifle. But once you want to start adding extra magazines, you're then going to be at 50 quid a magazine. And I run six of the PTS EPM mags plus the standard one for a total of seven. So it's 450 for the gun, but then straight away you've got another 300 on mags, which can be a little bit of a hard pill to swallow. It's a necessary evil though, and something that you do just need to pay the price for. Sitting here editing this video now, I've realized that I completely forgot to mention that out of the box, this gun can shoot a bit hot. On 0.25 gram BVs at the department CQB uh, airsoft site a couple of weeks ago, I was shooting about 325 to 327 FPS, which obviously is over the limit. And I had to go down to Nuprol 1.0 gas to bring that down to a safe and legal limit. Unfortunately, when you do that, you're going to lose a lot of the gas efficiency. So instead of getting two to two and a half mags of uh, BBs out of one gas bill, I was getting only one if I was lucky. When I'm playing outdoors in woodland and it can be a little bit cooler, on some occasions I can get away with running New Prol 3.0 and I'll be pretty much bang on the limit. A lot of the time I'll be on the New Prol 2.0 gas to bring it down below the limits. KWA do say on their website uh, that it's uh, around 400 FPS out of the box on 0.25s. Now personally I haven't experienced it being that high unless they came out with a lower powered version for the UK and they also say the maximum effective range is 35 yards and mine's zeroed out to 65 meters out of the box without uh, any aftermarket modifications or anything like that. So I would take those figures with a grain of salt. With some editing magic, I can show you how I've got mine configured. So this is my outdoor woodland longer range sort of configuration and Garantham style will go from tip to butt. Starting at the top, we've got the PTS Griffin Armaments QD Suppressor. So this one just pops off like so. And we can pop that one back on like that. Moving down from there, we've got a Night Evolution M600 Scout on a WADSN 45 degree offset mount, just to give it a little bit of a lower profile. You can see there rather than it hanging off the side of the gun. This is essentially just a surefire replica, but it is super bright and super effective, especially when you're in dark areas or you want to ID your teammates if you're in a CQB sort of environment. Coming down, we've got the PTS Fortis Shift Short Angle Foregrip. Then onto the Vision King 1.25 to 5 pi LPVO or short dot scope on a cheap Amazon mount with QD, I'll turn my torch on, on a cheap Amazon mount with QD attachments there. So I can just pop that one off if I need to. And finally, the sling attachment for my Warrior Assault Systems Fastex sling that you can see in my loadout video up there. After a bit more video editing magic, I'll show you my CQB configuration. And I finished my video editing magic again, and here's my CQB configuration. Not much has changed, really. I've taken the suppressor off to make it a much shorter configuration, and swapped out that LPVO for my SOTAC Gear LC Red Dot Sight, which is a replica loophole LCO. Comes with red and green dot, the adjustable brightness, does say it's night vision compatible as well, but I'm yet to test that. And then, it might be really simple just to pop a couple of QD attachments off and add a red dot. But one more thing that I would like is the ability to build a complete other upper receiver, but again, with all the same KWA parts in it. So same barrel, same hop unit, same receiver, and just be able to pop out two pins and swap those over. So I can have my CQB configuration and my outdoor configuration sitting there. I haven't been able to find a complete upper receiver or all the parts available online to build one. Um, you know, so I might be a really small YouTuber, but KWA, if you feel like sending me a complete upper for this gun, barrel and hop and all, it would be greatly appreciated. If you got through to the end of the video, thanks for sticking around. Don't forget to go down below, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. I'm planning to do a whole heap more of these reviews, going through my different optics, different guns, and maybe even the cameras that I used to go and record airsoft out on the field. So again, 
make sure you pop down below, like, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know what you think about the, uh, the LM4 or moving from an AEG to gas blowback. Is it something you can see yourself doing in the future or have you already done it? Just start a conversation. See you next time.